All right, welcome back from that. Let me tell you a bit about my guest. After he graduated from the university in Nigeria, he struggled to get a job for at least two years. During this time, he says uh, he felt there was more to his life. In his attempt to make a difference with his life during this period, he realized that the situation was not peculiar to him alone, as several other young people were facing a similar challenge. This inspired him to begin uh, to find means to help this demography of people. He began to work with universities to help young people develop project management skills. He also contacted a number of businesses to try and understand the skills and competences they looked for from Nigerian graduates and began to develop the company's engagement and value proposition around these skills. This was the best of Utiva. Let's make welcome my guest, the CEO of Utiva, Eitayo Ogumola. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight. Thank you so much. I like the way you pronounced my name. <laughs> I, I pronounced it right, right? You did well. You okay. Did well. You did well. You go, Justin. Let's talk about this. Let's start from even the way I introduced you. Uh, tell us about your story, really. Uh, you uh, graduated for two years. Uh, you didn't get a job, and uh, you felt there was a need to actually add value. Yeah. I mean, so I went to one of the best schools. You know, and I got some of the best education, you know, but I got to the job market mm -hmm. and um, I struggled with, you know, finding a job. So when you think about it, you know, um, I had gone to the university to study medical physiology. I thought I was even the departmental president. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I should have some soft landing, some yeah. leverage in the job market. Most likely to succeed. <laughs> yeah. well, I but I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't get a job. Okay. So I thought about it, that there is... You know, almost 130 million young people, mm -hmm. you know, about 65 million people are leaving the universities, you know, graduating. Um, what's their, their fate? Uh, but I got lucky, actually. I got a mentor who supported mm -hmm. me, who helped me to learn tech skills. I moved to the U.S. in 2015, you know, as a product manager. But while I was in the U.S., I was so on. I, I couldn't find the rest that I needed because mm -hmm. I kept thinking about where I was coming from, you know. And the fact that there are a lot of young people that really need the same opportunity that I had. So I came back to Nigeria in 2017 mm. and started Utiva officially in 2018, 2019, really. Because it was quite very tough okay. to understand the space and how mm. you were going to start, you know, mm. quite a struggle here. Yeah. Okay, fine. You, uh, in uh, your introduction, you talked about uh, tech skills in passing. So let's talk about it and uh, why it is really important for young people specifically to actually have or harness these skills? Yeah. So there are two ways to think about it. The first one is that the demand mm -hmm. you know, is quite really high. And we're not talking about the demand at a much more local level. You know, not just Nigerian-based companies or African startups. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the opportunity to globalize you know, your skills and contribute to a much more larger ecosystem of mm -hmm. the technology community. So today, almost 90% of companies really need tech talent, mm. you know, to build some facilities, build some infrastructure, or just like you said, analyze data, build some cloud, you know, support systems. Mm. So the demand is quite very high. The second opportunity is the fact that within a very short period of time, you can learn the skill, you know, unlike some other skills that might take up about four years to learn, you can mm. pick a data skill mm. and learn it in four months, you know. Uh, and that, those are the two major opportunities. And it's not, it's no longer pricey, mm -hmm. you know, with quite very small resources. The most important thing is for you to be dedicated and got like an internet and laptop to really mm -hmm. say you want to learn. Okay. Yes. Well, you, you, you make it sound very easy. You're talking about just get internet and laptop. Fine. <laughs> in as much as uh, internet penetration has actually improved in yeah. the country. But when you talk about hardware, it's not really uh, a thing that people can really get or access uh, uh, so easily. But let's talk about uh, that in Nigeria as it is right now. Well, why would you, uh, what would you uh, say is the reason why uh, Nigerians per se have not fully um, embraced uh, these skills? Because if they're actually getting the well-paid jobs, uh, blockchain, AI, and all of that, how come we are not yet, or it's not yet Uhuru for us here as a country? Yeah. So there are three ways to really think about you know, that. The first is the cultural mindset. Mm. You know, the fact that over the years, you know, as a people, we've been told that the, op the bigger opportunities are in accounting, they're mm. in medicine, they're in law. So we still have primary school teachers, secondary school teachers still saying the same thing to the kids. So mm. people are going to the universities to invest their time, learning skills um, that are not really in the high demand. You know, that's the first problem. 
The second problem is there is still no enough and sufficient, you know, um, adequate education to mm. really help people get that level of awareness that there are opportunities in the space. The third one is as much as I make it look like it's quite very easy, nothing really good comes easy. You True. still require a lot of discipline, mm -hmm. hard work. Commitment to But well. we, I mean, I have seen over 10,000 people whose lives have been transformed, yeah. who have gone to learn skills, um, build better lives, you know, people who have traveled abroad, get bigger jobs abroad through tech, mm. you know, and, and the testimonials are everywhere around us. Yeah. However, when you do a deeper dive and you dig deeper into the lives of these people, you would realize that it's a lot of commitment, you know, learning, midnight candles being born, mm. you know, but the opportunities are there. But yes. the good thing with the tech space is it's so really impossible for you to be that good, yeah. for you to have learned that skill and stay unemployed. It's almost impossible. The ecosystem is so bold that people are placing their bets on people. They're giving you internships. Yeah. Apprenticeships are there. Opportunities for you to take freelance jobs, side gigs. I mean, you can literally stay in your house and take a gig that pays you almost a million oh, as right. a product designer. Yeah. But for you, someone to commit a million into you and say, hey, build this for me, you need to be good. And what does it take to be good? Yeah. You know, continue to practice. You know, okay. it's like being a footballer. Continue to practice, build, you your know, capacity. build your capacity, and that's all it takes. Okay, so speaking of uh, capacity building, you know, in passing, you also talked about education. Let's look at our educational system, specifically uh, our ivory towers right now. Would you really say that uh, they are equipped to uh, the modern realities of um, our present times right now? Because uh, I don't know, back when I was in school, uh, when I did my first degree, I was only showed a diskette and I, when uh, <laughs> the, the world had actually gone beyond yeah. that. So would you really say that uh, in Nigeria, or in Africa specifically, that uh, our schools um, have uh, what it takes to build young people so they can actually take the most and get the benefits of uh, you know, what's happening in, in fintech and um, yeah. the digital world yeah. as we speak? I mean, so the short answer to that is no. Um, there are five different cardinals, you know, to wait, the way to think about this. You know, the capacity of the educators themselves, the mm. lecturers, you know, the tutors, the coaches in school, the institution itself becoming digitally transformed such that everywhere you go, the narratives and the conversations in the school is really about, you know, the tech eco ecosystem, mm -hmm. the, the technology landscape. Mm. The third one is the curriculum itself, you know, the way, and the way I think about this every time is, you don't really have to be a tech person. Mm. Whatever you are studying has to embrace tech. If it's medicine, you know, it has to embrace tech. And that's the way to kind of like transform the universities. True. And the fourth one, which I think is the most important one, is the incentive. Mm. You know, the incentive for these young people to say, I really want to learn software engineering. And in terms of the incentive, we need to restructure mm. so that we have a much more private sector driven educational system okay. where private sectors are coming to the universities, funding the universities to train mm. those young people to become tech oriented and tech driven, mm. and then come back to pick them and place a bet on them through internship and apprenticeship. All right. And that's the last, and the last one is the government itself. Okay. We need to now begin to enact policies. We'll, around we'll, we'll that talk here. about the government in a moment because uh, there's a whole lot to have to talk about uh, when uh, the government is actually brought to bear in uh, development and how to change uh, the yeah. narratives. It is still business insights on Plus TV. Africa. My guest, uh, Eitai Ogumola, is still here. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking at the role of government in building capacity for the young people and, of course, some things they uh, have done in their own little way to actually um, model young people to actually be their best in a moment when we return to join us again. All right, welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at ICT development and, of course, a building capacity for young people. My guest is Eyi Tayo Ugumola. Many thanks for staying with Thank me. Thank you. Just before we took the break, uh, we're talking about um, how government can actually play vital roles in changing the narrative. Please continue. Um, so the way to think about it, I mean, it's quite a very broader, you know, um, engagement that the government needs to do. But it usually starts with you know, a lot of investment in curriculum redevelopment. Mm. You know, making sure that we are intentional about infusing you know, the demand into the supply. 
we need to ensure that we do a lot of research and understand what the employers are looking for. Mm. You know, then go back and redesign our curriculum and whatever we are training these young people in, you know, to ensure that you know, we cover the demand side mm. of the equation. And then that also comes with also you know, investing so much in the educators themselves. Mm. The lecturers in schools, I know Microsoft is doing something like around that, you know, okay. training over 10,000 lecturers, mm. you know, to learn tech skills and also getting them to in turn, you know, train, mm. you know, the university students. So there's so much to do, but it usually starts with, you know, understanding the demand side. Mm. The part that I'm so much excited about is really dragging the private sector to come to the universities okay. So they have and like invest. A public private partnership. Like a public pri private partnership. But okay. investing upfront. Um, because if you don't invest upfront, it's so difficult to get a private sector company to also want to come to the table with you. So if the government invests upfront, then get the, the private sector to say, hey, we've trained 100,000 software engineers, mm. data scientists in the past four years. Are you happy to provide them with internship, apprenticeship? What you would find, and this has happened in Lagos State before, you know, you would find the private sector getting excited about this, you know, and that's one of the things I think the government needs to start to do. Okay, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, well, I say, corporate social responsibility. Over time, I know that uh, you have worked out with um, Binance and uh, Microsoft to actually build capacity of young people. Can you tell us about it, and can you tell us how Nigerians can actually benefit from that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are not many organizations yeah. and institutions, especially like the large corporations that are invested so much, you know, at the level that, you know, some of our partners are doing. Yeah. Like Binance, for example, invested yeah. to train 50,000 people, you know, and also provide 1,000 scholarships. Yeah. You know, it's quite very easy to access some of these things. You know, one of the best things to do is, you know, to check around and see the scholarships are available mm. for young people, and not just in Nigeria, across Africa. Okay. You know, um, I think almost 20,000 people have actually accessed the opportunities, mm. but we still have a space for about 30,000 people fully funded, mm. you know, by Binance Charity. Mm. And this is one of the initiatives of Binance Charity. And just to put it out there, it's not only Binance Charity that is doing social good, mm. right? There's so many other organizations that are doing the same thing. HP, for example, Microsoft, like I mentioned. So young people also need to be very proactive, mm. you know, getting aware of this opportunity so that you can plug into them. Okay, fine. That's well said. Speaking of opportunities, now for someone uh, who actually has uh, left school and uh, he has done uh, uh, his... Uh, Compulsory National Youth Service Call, and uh, he really wants uh, to get um, a prof into a profession uh, in ICT and uh, the value chain or the ecosystem. What would your advice to him be? Um, so the first advice would be attend free sessions okay. you know, where you can educate yourself and get yourself familiarized with the mm. entire space so that you would understand the different opportunities in that space. The second thing will be speak with a learning advisor. You know, right. Getting a mentor is always a very easy, you know, route to getting into a new territory. You know, find someone who can coach you. Um, if you can also find an expert that can help you align your other skills mm. with the tech skills. So, for example, if you've got great leadership, um, you are a people's person. There are opportunities for you in product management. If you love to analyze and think out of the box, mm. data science might be your thing. You know, if you're creative and you love visuals and design, product design might be your thing. So mm. there's so many opportunities in that space. Um, but the three first things that I mentioned would be the lowest hanging fruit. And there's so many free sessions out there, you know, that can kind of like get you familiarized with the mm. ecosystem. Find a mentor who can help you get the clarity that you need. And the most important thing, make sure whatever space you are getting into, align with your soft skills, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because you don't want to get into a space that frustrates, you know, your creativity, your, uh, your energy. And that's the way to think about, you know, coming into the tech space. Okay, fine. Uh, still talking about the government. Uh, let's talk about uh, maybe challenges. We've talked about um, that in the education sector. You also uh, uh, preferred some solution about um, educating the educators as well. Yeah. But uh, how would you, or what would you say are the challenges uh, that is actually mitigating against um, the growth of um, the ICT ecosystem here in the country? And uh, what more can be done, you know, to just uh, boost Nigeria? So, so Nigeria can actually be like a hub. So, I mean, when, when I look at all those other ecosystems, you know, I've, I've lived in almost four countries, um, and I study some of the territories and the things they've done. You know, we need to lower the barrier to entry, and one of the best ways to do mm -hmm. that is to provide study loans. 
you know learning the tech skill can be very very expensive because then you need to bond data you need to have a laptop you need to attend classes you need to attend sessions mm. uh, but if we provide study loans and then we spread the loan you know um, we, people are able to learn and pay for quality the second thing we need to do is we need to really provide opportunities for people to practice what they've learned. Okay. You know, I see lots of young people who are graduating from different boot camps but do not have the platform to express their mm -hmm. capacities. So we need to start to foster relationships with institutions and organizations that can provide them with three months, four months internship, you know, mm -hmm. just to practice what they've learned, you know. I think the most important thing is to incentivize success. Mm -hmm. And I like the like what you're doing. You know, we need to also bring other smarter young people who have gone through these things and they've gone through the toughness of these things to tell their stories. Mm. So that other people can see from the reality and the lenses of people who have done it before. Mm. I, I think those are the three ways to really supercharge the ecosystem. All right, I want to say a very big thank you to you, Ita, for all of um, the useful insights that you have thank brought you. on the show today. We do appreciate them. Thank you so much. All right, my guest has been Ita Yo. Ogumola, he is the CEO and founder of um, Utiva. But just before we go, Ghost Mode Digitization is a panacea to financial services security and other bottlenecks. It is an innovation by fintechs to ensure privacy as well as solve the dual challenge of protection and security. I'll leave you with details of that report and I'll see you again next time. I am Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for watching.